Nowadays, if somebody's doing something that's negligent, say they're driving while texting, not looking at the road, and they hit someone and kill them, they may face criminal prosecution, and they will certainly get sued by an attorney like me. But back in the day when the Jews were in the desert, and then when they entered the promised land, something else would happen. Someone who would kill someone else negligently would run. They would flee to one of the cities of refuge, one of the cities that was designated for people who would have to go into exile after killing someone negligently. While there in the city of refuge, they'd be safe from possible vengeance by the family members of the person they had killed. And they'd have to remain in that city for the rest of their life, contemplating the terrible thing that they had done, unless and until the sitting Kohen Gadol, the high priest, would die. Then and only then could they go free from exile, could they leave that city of refuge. The commentators explain the connection as follows. Had that high priest prayed harder or set a better example for his generation as to the sanctity and the importance of human life, then his generation would have been more careful and no one would have killed someone else negligently. Indeed, during the entire 40 years that the Jews were in the desert, no one killed someone else negligently. How do we know that? Because when Aaron, Aharon, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest died, we're told that every single Jew cried. But if someone had killed his fellow negligently, he would have been in exile. And he would have gone free at the death of Aaron, so he wouldn't have cried, he would have been happy. Fascinatingly, the Talmud tells us that the mothers of each one of the high priests would cook and provide clothing for people who had killed negligently and who were confined to the cities of refuge. Why? Because they didn't want those negligent killers to pray for the death of the high priest. Now think about that. Would God really kill a high priest because someone who had killed someone negligently was praying for that? Maybe. Because consider this. The Talmud also tells us that on the holiest day of the year, during the service on Yom Kippur, the high priest would utter a prayer. And one of the key elements in that prayer was a request that God not entertain the prayers of wayfarers, of travelers who would pray that it not rain so as not to inconvenience them. Now the country of Israel desperately needs rain. Would God stop the rainfall because some travelers would be inconvenienced? Again, the answer Maybe, because that's how powerful, sincere, heartfelt prayer can be. Ideally, prayer should be with a minion, as part of a service, in Hebrew, but it's easy now. There are transliterated prayer books. There are prayer books with translations. I mean, even Rocky figured out how to say Kaddish when Mickey died. Cool, Israel. The Imaru. The Imaru. Amen. But even if you can't make it to a minion, or you're not comfortable with the service, or you just can't say it in Hebrew, then pray in any language, at any time, for whatever you need. The answer isn't always yes, but it is often enough to make it very worthwhile. Mm -hmm.